Or, hey man, hey, uh, um, I need you to say my name three times real quick. Come on, just help brother out. Uh, what, what's your name? Uh, well, the number one in Spanish if it were a female. Una. And then, hey, look over there in the fridge real quick. Uh, uh, juice. That's right. Now let's test it one time. Now just give me two more times. Two more times, buddy. Una juice? Oh, baby, it's showtime. Let's do this. No, 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 no. I heard about you. You're evil, Una juice. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> it's showtime. <laughs> Please tell me you're wearing a striped black and white shirt or checkered. I would if I had one. I, did, did I tell you that when we went to New York, we saw two musicals? This was last October, <laughs> pre-corona <laughs> we okay. um we saw two musicals one of them was actually the musical for beetlejuice there's a musical of it i didn't know that yes it's awesome like i listened to the the soundtrack and it's like you got to see it live like like it doesn't capture do the they moment. have the day oh yeah they do all the major songs and then kind of have like you know like a twist on all of them it's really fun i really liked it cool cool Speaking of which, um, have you done anything cool for Halloween so far? No, we had homecoming at school this week, but I didn't dress up since I don't have any kids in class, so it didn't seem worth the effort. <laughs> I haven't done anything fun. We went to a fall festival near our house. Like we put our masks on, and it was pretty uncomfortable how many people they allowed in at a time. Even though, even with the mask, you know, you still kind of want to distance, particularly when you're got a five year old son. But I'll, I'll send you some pictures here. They just had, I think they they, they boasted 3,000 pumpkins. Wow. Some that they've carved, some that they've had lit up, some that I think were just electronic lights and such. But uh, there's really cool, there's even this one part where they have like this ghost bridge where you like walk up and like everybody's screaming and these lights go off and I'm like, what the heck? And there's like this fog everywhere. We get up on top of this bridge and they have like these lights that just light up in sequence to kind of imitate a train coming like towards you. really cool it's like this ghost train so uh but my, my family and i did that and it was really really cool here in indianapolis but uh definitely a little concerned with just how crowded it got oh well that's kind of a bummer but it sounds like a pretty cool experience overall though you know what corona can take my summer it can take my spring but damn if it'll take my fall away from me i still need to do some fall things <laughs> right i mean you got fall football you've got halloween thanksgiving Christmas, yeah, Pearl Harbor yeah. Day, voting. Man. We're getting ready to enter into a season of being holed up. So maybe maybe people will actually stay at home for once. Anyways. And read some scary ghost stories. National Hispanic Heritage Month. We just wrap that up. I really enjoyed our readings this month for it. But at the same time, I'm kind of curious. Like, We didn't have a lot of engagement with the National Hispanic Heritage Month. I know we just kind of sprung it last minute but uh i would love to hear your guys's opinions if you did or didn't follow along you know let us know why would you be open for us doing more you know latinx stories uh, i think i enjoyed myself but i noticed that the engagement was way down on that we obviously aren't a huge latinx channel but you know we're looking to explore it i'd love to hear your guys's feedback on that so to help me understand and plan for the future yeah I, i'd was interested in that as well because i really enjoyed those stories i don't know maybe tell us some of the more popular ones that we should do maybe we need some yeah. suggestions and change your schedule <laughs> that's a, that, that, well that's a good question is what are the more popular ones because we're going off of this book and kind of some of our research, independent research on it we'd love to hear your guys's opinion so with that said with our wrap-ups if you are new here our videos go heavy into detail where either you don't care about spoilers or you're looking to really understand and get to what the literature means being a good reader takes effort, it takes skill, and it's something that you get better at the more that you do it, and we hope to have some people along the journeys as we do that. Now, what this wrap-up is, is meant to be kind of the spoiler-free version. Let's talk about what we read and say, what would we recommend to the average person who's open to literature and, and understanding the truth about the human experience, right? So first up, we always start off with our pick of the month, where of all the stories, novels, short stories, manga, whatever that we read... What would be the one thing we'd recommend to our audience? Crypto, what is your pick of October? Come on, this one's easy. Slaughterhouse-Five graphic novel. 
Oh, I told you that no and, way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I say no way in the sense that it's my pick, too. I, I think. Of course. It has to of, be, right? Of everything that we did this month, it's such a unique experience. It really is. It was awesome. I loved it. Uh, as I said, I read it twice in the first week. I've read it actually a third time. Not like fully cover to cover, but kind of perusing through some of my favorite panels and pieces and trying to pick up on a few things, especially after I failed the quiz miserably because I didn't study hard enough. I'm, I'm going back <laughs> and trying to redeem myself. You know, so. I, asked, I asked some people for feedback on that, and they said that they don't care whether we get it right or wrong, really. Oh, okay. they, thought it, they thought it was fun to kind of guess along at home. They said, okay. um, you know, we got, we got some feedback on that. I'll share that with you off screen. But I think we should do that more often, some more of our fun reads. Particularly as we're approaching 2021, I kind of want to schedule in some what are going to be our four, not to say that our other reads aren't fun, but what are the ones where the videos are meant for entertainment versus the videos that we put out that are meant for education. So, uh, yeah, d- definitely. I hate failing, though. The teacher in me. I got to pass. I know. I know. <laughs> got to have some fun with it, bro. It's a, it's yeah, a learning I know, experience I know. Well, that's, that's story is fun, too. So, uh, yeah, you, yeah, you got to read that one. You got to buy that one. It's worth it. Please support those guys. So maybe they'll do some more adaptations because their art and their storytelling ability is off the chain. It was next level. It really was. Now, with that said, are you okay and healthy enough? I, I don't know how much visually you are showing. Like, I know you like to show off a little cleavage sometimes with your deep V-necks and such. <laughs> Crypto here is just kind of recovering from a procedure. Are you able to Vanna White me one armed or what are you going to do here? Yeah, I still got my, my right arm where I can Vanna White. I okay, so that. so right arm. Yeah. V- it's my left arm that I can't really use. So okay, okay, be white me. You ready for this? This these are yeah, our ready. ratings. If you are new here, this is what we'd recommend for you guys. These are not our ratings. These are our oh, recommendations to you. Okay. What did you say? Right. I was already doing it. I didn't know. Oh, I'm so sorry. sorry. <laughs> Top of the line, numero uno. You should go out and purchase this. A special limited edition signed copy, if you can collect it means you need to get up and go purchase this immediately. You mean numero una. Numero una. (laughs) (laughs) Numero doce. Doce. (laughs) Dosa. (laughs) That doesn't work at all. Uh, We have have buy it. Okay, so this is the go out and buy a paperback, a hardback, a Kindle, however you traditionally consume books. Pay full price for this. It's something that you probably want to get in your library and may want to read multiple times for our average reader. Medium. Third pick is the backlog it. This means go to the library, get it at a friends of a library, to handle half price, deep discount sale. Get to it when you get to it. You might want to check this one out. It's definitely worth your time still in some regard. Second from the bottom is the skip it. These we probably had some issues with. It's the idea that we think a lot of people, it may not resonate either because it's very eclectic in its intent and theme, or maybe just maybe some of the problems with it may cause a lot of people to disconnect from the story. Bottom of the line, ooh, the trash it, reserved for the elite stories that specifically attempted to sabotage themselves with mistakes and problems galore. Beware and do your research for this. It doesn't mean it's the worst book out there. It means that there's a book out there for everyone. There's not many people that this book's for. <laughs> I didn't have my trash can, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Pl- the two please, hand- the- please do research before you read that one. All right, so let's move into this stories. Let's start with short, short stories, if you don't mind, this month. Let's do it. All right, we did the five short stories for the Latino, you know, the His- National Hispanic Heritage Month. Let's let's start with that one because we were just talking about that. We had Luisa Mercedes Levinson's The Clearing. And if you're new, we, we typically guess each other's ratings. We don't talk about these in advance of what we think we'd recommend. We're just guessing based on our talks. I think you are going to say... Mm, I'm going to guess that you said backlog it for this one. Yeah, I did say backlog it. It's a pretty good story, but I think that there are others in the Latino short stories that you should maybe read before this one. But it's worth a read. It's very interesting. It is. It's very aggressive prose translated by Sarah Arvio. I can only assume the natural Hispanic language. Spanish. I think it's Spanish, right? Argentina? Yeah, it's got to be Spanish that it was written in. All right, next up, Maria Luisa Bombal's The Tree or El Arbol, translated by Richard and Lucia Cunningham for our version. You said buy it. Yeah, this one is so interesting. It's, it, what does it mean? What, is, what does it mean? I still want to know. Go go watch the video and comment, please. Yeah. <laughs> Put a little tree there and tell me what the tree means, please. <laughs> 
I would say... What you said, you said, you said buy it, right? Yeah, I said buy it. And it's one of those things that we were both high... Well, well I was high analytical, low pleasure. Is that what you were? Yeah. Or you were flipped? No, I was the same. Okay. It's one of those ones I still think about. Of, of the five short stories, I loved Crime and the Mathematics Professor last month's Clarice Lispector story. Like, don't get me wrong. But of of them, I feel like I've been thinking about El Arbol the most, like the meaning of it. Like that's the one I've spent the most time on. So definitely I think it's worth checking out. And I, and I those both have lower engagement. So again, let me know in the comments down below what you guys thought. Or if you'd like us to continue that that area, we, we really enjoyed it. We'd, we'd love to hear why you did or didn't check out those those stories. Yeah, was now, it us or was it the story? I would like to know yeah. that as well. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's fair, that's fair. Now, next up, we have Story of Your Life by Ted Chang from the book The Stories of Your Life by Ted Chang. <laughs> we both said you, collect it. You said collect it, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm yeah. a collect it as well. Yeah, yeah. Go, go, I don't go, even go, much. Go, go, go watch the movie. Go read the story. You're going to love both. Yeah. I, I, our talk was difficult on that because of... I don't want to cut out stuff, but I had to cut out stuff because we would just go on forever on that story it's just so fascinating yeah i think i think we recorded for like 50 minutes and you got it down to what like a 35 minute video or something i I cut out a (laughs) lot because i'm like is this really helping someone understand the story no this is us just having fun so well all right maybe maybe one day we'll have a behind the scenes patreon full version of of our talks Oh, hint hint now spotted horses by william faulkner the last one in our faulkner certificate program you rated it it was pretty fun but it's not necess- i mean it's not absalom absalom right no uh, you said backlog it yeah i'm guessing you said backlog it too it's or it's that or buy it. it's that or buy it i think i'm gonna go with backlog it i think i think snopes is a buy it and we've talked before that 20 well in the future there might be a summer of snopes event where we do a read-along of all three snopes books this yeah snopes trilogy yeah 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 all right ivan the fool by leo tolstoy our pen ultimate leo tolstoy story for the year <sighs> tolstoy not triggered anymore i know <laughs> this, this has been a great year I, I have enjoyed focusing on one author throughout the whole year really did translated by uh the the mods this is done with along with noah from everyone who reads it must converse please consider checking out his channel great guy you said the problem is is that there wasn't a ton of uniqueness to it so is it fair to rate that because because we're recommending it to two, friends right so well, you can give it two ratings if you want right well so, so so okay so so the two ratings are if you've never read tolstoy before versus you've read a lot of tolstoy but you haven't read ivan the fool is that a, is right. that okay yeah so if you've never read tolstoy before buy it if you yeah. have read tolstoy particularly post 1880 Okay, pre-1880, I, I disagree. Skip if you've it. read enough post-1880s... Oh, I was going to say backlog it. You said skip it. Okay. Yeah, I think maybe just skip it altogether. Yeah, okay. I mean, I don't know. This one, uh, that that the story itself is pretty good. The teachable moments are pretty good, but there's so much better out there. Uh, but again, maybe if you're a teacher or if you get this as you know as a student, I don't know. It's but, somewhere but in there. It's, isn't it's hard, it hard to pick to... one of them. Isn't it hard to rate though when this is it, it it's not bad. It's no, not no. it's not original. And the problem is is how do you how do you discredit the originality? Because if this was the first one you read and then you read all the other Tolstoy triggered projects, wouldn't those be less exciting as opposed to this one? And and that's a yeah. that's an order thing and that's not fair to rate it that way for other people, I think. So that's why that one's hard. Yeah. And I think too is that a lot of times when we rate things, we're rating them against other similar stories. And in this one, we're rating literally Tolstoy against Tolstoy. And it's it's almost impossible. You just read bo- read them all. I mean, we, we're going to keep reading them. So. He's so simple. He's so poignant. I love him. Just a great writer. Really. Yeah. He, yeah one of the greatest of all times, obviously. Well, well, and there's people that have probably read like Anna Karenina and they've loved it. Or they read Anna Karenina. They're like, well, it was okay. It wasn't really my thing. I don't, I don't know if I've ever met anyone that's like, I hate Anna Karenina. I, I don't know if it's fair to compare that to these short stories. Like, post-1880, Tolstoy is so different from pre-1880. You need to check out post-1880 if you haven't. Agreed. All right, I have. The, 
The Pedestrian by Ray Bradbury, allegedly his most popular story and exploding in assignments for schools for teaching. You rated this a buy it. Yeah, definitely a buy it. I don't think it's quite the caliber of some of the other ones we've done and my personal enjoyment for this story, but wow, is this one good. Uh, again, Ray Bradbury knocking out of the park, and I love the sci-fi element to this one and how he nails what life is like in 2020 and beyond. He just he, incredible, incredible. I forget I forget who it is who said it, but someone said the sci-fi writer's job is not just to predict the road, but to predict the traffic jam, right? And that's what yeah. he did in this story. He predicted the traffic jam in, of 2020, in or the, the lack story. thereof. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Good story. Good story. I, yeah. I'm all, I'm also going to buy it. Buy it. Yeah. Buy it, buy it. for okay. sure. Yeah. All right. Up next, a man who was almost a man as one of his titles. Um, there's been there's a couple of titles by Richard Wright. You rated this a ooh. This could be a collective for you, or is it a buy it? It's not. It's not a backlog. I will be shocked if it's backlog. It. I'm going to say you said collect it yeah that's right yeah i love this one i was all over this one this one was so good there was so much imagery and there's so much about the south and racism and him trying to teach you know future generations to be better of all different you know races and stuff this one is so good and again so relevant to today this is stuff that needs to be taught in school in history class literature class go out and read 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 this one please do yourself a favor you will become a better person as a result i've never seen a story with how much we've been doing this channel for almost a little over a year now right I've never seen a story so succinctly be able to nail what does a gun mean to man and so subtly work in these these themes of, of racial inequality into it without beating you over the head. It's so subtle and it's it's magic. It's magic. What do you you gonna read? You said collect it. Yeah, collect it for sure, for sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, our next four are our Halloween treats, if you will. These were not tricks, or were they? Right. <laughs> First, we have the legend. You tricked of, me into reading them. <laughs> we have the legend of Sleepy Hollow by Washington Irving. You said, you said skip it, didn't you? Yeah, I'm thinking you probably said skip it. You may have said backlog it. I don't know. What'd you say? I'm gonna go What'd with skip say? it. I'm gonna no, say you skip, skip it. Skip it too. I was considering, I was like, could you trash, I just wanted to entertain it, could you trash this story? And I'm like, no, yes, it's very easy to judge the, the ethnocentric view of life now compared to what it was back then. But there's just so, it's just such a classic tale. I love the way it worked from truthiness to less truthiness. It's a fun story. I like the Disney cartoon better, though. Yeah, I think that save yourself the time and go watch the cartoon or a movie or a TV show. But if you really have to read it, so at least you know the source material and how they were able to make it better, eh, go for it. Yeah, yeah, no, don't go out of your way for it. It'll probably be in a collection like like mine was. It just kind of, it was here, and I was like, oh, hey, it's Halloween. We need to schedule in a Halloween read. Let's do this. And uh, I don't think I've ever read it. If I read it in high school, I've, I have forgotten or wasn't intelligent enough to pick up on some of the, the stuff going on. <laughs> All right, let's move into the manga, and then we'll go into our novels. Okay. So for manga, Leslie and I finished off One Piece 47 through 70 by Ichiro Oda. Now, Leslie is, as you know, the best person in the world. Go subscribe to her channel, right? So this was Thriller Bark through, um, what was it, New World? New World, okay. So you tell me what my ratings are first before I say anything. Collect it. I'm going to say backlog it. <gasps> What? You're I just know. saying that to mess with me. No, no, this is my this is my real this is my real feelings. I think for our average fan, you could actually get some value out of the first two box sets. This third set has a lot more slowness and is more of a setup. And not only that, so I didn't tell you this, but this one has issues the author maybe maybe it's his Japanese heritage. Maybe I as an American look at these problems differently from the way his upbringing was. Let, let me accept. You're stupid. <laughs> let me accept that difference, okay? But the problem is, we touched on cross dressing and we touched on racism. 
from a from from these two parts. Not super strong in these two parts compared to the ideas of friendship, themes of uh, giving without expectation of receiving. Much weaker, definitely, you can't call it white man's burden because this is the Japanese view of it, right? But you definitely had the hero saving, pulling the people out of slavery as opposed to them freeing them. Common trope issues with it. So gonna go with the backlog on this one. I don't Love know it. if we've, uh, have we but, ever talked about white man's burden and described that? Have I ever taught about that? I don't think I've ever taught that on the channel yet. We'll have to do um, that someday. Well, if we you have. had, if you are properly preparing for your Faulkner certificate, you would have heard me do a, a mini rant on it with, with Go Down Moses. Oh, I'll have to go back and watch that video. <clears throat> oh, yeah, you do, because you're going to, you are, you I'm failed. I'm going to click like and subscribe, you, too. Well, hang on, you read... You read the the Slaughterhouse Five graphic novel and failed hard in my quiz. Imagine how you're going to yeah. do now, having not read some of those. Are you going to read them, or are you just going to go fail the test? What are you going to do? I'm going to go watch the videos that this awesome guy on YouTube put out, and I know they're mm. so good because they have thousands of views. So he must help somebody. Mm. He'll help me. All right, I think you're going to fail. His my name quiz. is Una Juice. You're going to fail my quiz. That's what you're going to do. All right. Up next, we have none other to talk about than Tokyo Ghoul. What an appropriate read for Halloween specifically. I read this two years ago when I first got this. I think my wife bought me this box set for Halloween. Really, really enjoyed it. Reading it again with Leslie now. What are you going to think? I'm, this is just Tokyo Ghoul and then it's a sequel Tokyo Ghoul re. What do you I'm think? I'm thinking we're going to say collect it for this one and backlog the Tokyo Ghoul re. Well, we haven't we haven't finished re yet, so I can't I can't rate that one yet. But oh, okay. Tokyo, but Tokyo Ghoul, I can't. Whoops, I always hold this book upside down. I really do. But Tokyo Ghoul is really cool here. I'll, I'll put it over here on this side. How about that? I've got this really cool illustration book that has like color illustrations, particularly for when you have the manga. A lot of times it's published in black and white. That'll have really beautiful full page spreads of the color editions. That talks. Uh, it also has quotes from the author about why he chose certain colors. Just talks about his mood at the time. Very very cool. Tokyo Ghoul for our fans is going to be a backlog it. Oh. It's definitely more of an emotional ride. I think it's a fun Halloween read. For me, it's a collect it, right? But this is for our fans, right? I think there's not as much substance here. Not a ton of character development, though it is super interesting, very plot-driven. And I think our, most of our followers are more character and theme driven more so than than plot driven so this is definitely Don't project on them hey eh, come on <laughs> and tokyo ghoul we we can't we can't read yet so let's, let's get to our novels let's get to our novels all right okay crime and punishment are we rating that i know you're you're still with the epilogue to do or whatever are you are you fin are you ready I to have rate that? three three parts in the epilogue so i, I think we got to push that out then we can't rate that one yet okay so yeah we'll, we'll put, I, I, it's it's like 100 it's em- pages or something left so it's embarrassing but we got to push that out till november to rate but we'll, we're almost done now the, the way of yeah. kings we can finally rate right we we did this video where we tried to have a lot of fun with it got a lot of dislikes did we really <laughs> yeah we did we, I, I don't know if it's people like are like hey i don't want you to cover brandon sanderson or it's like i don't want you to have like fun focused videos because like were they wanting us to do a breakdown of it which <laughs> No. Well, then we get all dislikes <laughs> if we did that. Well, we really, really would. We'd probably get more dislikes if we did an all breakdown of it and held it to a literature scale, which is what not what it was trying to be. This it wasn't yeah, intended. That's not what it is. It's brain candy, right? Right. So I, I don't really know if if people are like, hey, I don't want you to do a ton of brain. Trust me, we're not going to do a ton of Brandon Sanderson. Um, <laughs> but we do like to have fun reads. We've always had Stephen King on here as our brain candy. We're gonna we're gonna still do some Brandon Sanderson on the journey. Like every when you do a ton of reedy heady experiences like this we want to have some that are just turn the brain off just go take me on a journey brandon let's have some fun <laughs> you said now i know you mm, are you a backlog it or are you a skip it you're gonna say skip it aren't you it depends on who are who, which fans we're talking to i mean i think yeah. half the people out there you gotta say backlog this and then the other ones you're gonna say uh skip it 
And then there's going to be that few, you know, people at the top. I, I, there's probably every there, there's probably everybody at each category. There's going to be people that say collect it. They have a signed copy. They go watch the weekly blogs that he does. And then there's people at the bottom that are going to say skip it. Uh, well, and there's some people that are like jealous and are like trash it because like they just hate Brandon Sanderson's like fame. Like, well, like not even they don't even actually irrational. hate it. They don't even hate it. They just hate the idea of it, right? <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Me personally, I just think that there is much better fantasy out there. And uh, maybe I'm a traditionalist, but I, and I've said before in our video, some of the comparisons I made with uh, the Wheel of Time, the Sword of Truth, Vampire Earth. To me, they're just, there are much better sci-fi and fantasy stories out there. Not saying that it's bad. Not saying that I didn't enjoy it. But I just feel that, for me, uh, it was a, it was a skip it. So take okay. with that what you will, because some people are going to say collect it and you know want to have Sanderson's baby. So <laughs> I don't know. You said what? skip it. Why do you always make me awkward? Wait for you to transition back to me, like because time. you can see my face that I'm every, thinking every time you said what I skip it. Yeah, I think. I think I'm a backlog it. Okay. I think I think most most of our fans are not going to be fans of it. But to your point, like you got Michael Nip and Christy Lewis out there that are that are collectors, right? Like they, they probably purchased that fancy Kickstarter version. Like Leslie probably That's bought thousand dollars. Yeah, the thousand dollar limited edition included one of Brandon Sanderson's you know fallen hairs in the book. Like you. Know. <laughs> As a bookmark. <laughs> right. Well, and then you have our, our fans, like the three dislikes, right? That are like, I hate everything Brandon Sanderson. Don't turn to Brandon Sanderson channel. It's just like, dude, <laughs> like Don't we worry, have from the beginning have always done occasionally fantasy. Like we like reading some fantasy. So I think I'm going to average out to a backlog it. Oh, geez. Okay. Look at this. You're, you're ready to get hit in the, the face with this one. Slaughterhouse five. Rate it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to send my coffee off. Blah, 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 blah. I want to send my copy to uh, Ryan North and uh, I always forget the artist's name. Albert person. Montes. Yeah, uh, Albert Montes, and I want him to sign it, man. And they retweeted you us know, too, which is really sweet of them. So maybe yeah, they'll sign my copy. Awesome. That was very nice of them. And I think maybe we should go to like a comic festival or you know event. Oh, when those are back up. Oh yeah, like Comic Con or something. Yeah, like once Corona ends and and people are allowed to talk to other people again face to face, it would be <laughs> it would be awesome to go actually go get that. I, I agree, that would be really cool to go do. Oh yeah, if they were ever at you know because uh, they have the big one here, uh, MegaCon in Orlando usually every year, and then they have the one in Tampa as well. Oh, I never noticed uh, that. You and I live in like super conventiony areas. You in yeah, Orlando, my, me in Indiana. Yeah. Like if, if people didn't know Indianapolis, like super convention-y, like tons of conventions happen here. Yeah, there's one in there's one in Orlando. There's one in Miami too, uh, called SuperCon, and then there, oh. there's MegaCon, SuperCon, and then whatever the one in in Tampa is called. So usually we have like three a year. So, but 2020 sucks. So yeah, except not in the summer because no one wants to live in Florida in the summer, right? <laughs> except for people that love the hot, sweaty mess. Oh boy. All right. So the last piece is the Wolves of the Kala, which we can't rate because we haven't finished. That'll that'll trail over to November, maybe, maybe longer. We'll see. You're gonna read it in the Smoky Mountains, right? <laughs> that and the uh Clarice Lespector biography is my goal. So I wanna I wanna tackle those two. And on, finish on Crime and Punishment. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I can finish that tonight. Like, I finish that tonight. I read I read hundred and fifty pages tonight. Oh, no. 150 pages i'll finish that okay minute. 20 minutes <laughs> well to be fair i've i've read this book before so i could read it right now if you needed me to oh look at you mr hot s-h-i-t thank you for censoring that for me well all right guys if you enjoyed today's conversation leave like a book emoji or something to let us know that you enjoyed the conversation. We had a good time tonight. Hopefully Crypto did too. Hopefully you enjoyed kind of learning a little bit more about our fall festivities and, and life events going on. If you're down for literature discussions, we have videos on every Monday and Thursday and sometimes a bonus video on Tuesdays. If that sounds like something you're down for, hit the subscribe button. Luna out. Peace. <laughs>